Welcome to another session of Teams in 20. Hope you had a, a nice bank holiday. We've had a little bit of a break over the last couple of weeks with Teams in 20, so so really glad to be back. If you haven't met me before, my name's Jo Johnston. I'm a Senior Customer Success Manager here at Microsoft and a big fan of community. So why is that? Community support is really essential for everybody in the workplace. We do like to chat. And an employees that feel more at home when they're at work are more likely to be more productive, satisfied, more engaged. But don't trust what I've got to say. Um, there was a Harvard study recently that linked good workplace social health to 50% lower risk of heart disease, 38% risk of stress-related illnesses. And a good, strong sense of community has been linked with higher levels of individual engagement and performance, and importantly, retention rates as well. But more importantly, mental health. So preparing for success. When I think of communities, there's often a theme involved. If you think about the, the superheroes community, it's all about you being that hero at work, bringing and showing your knowledge, maybe some new innovation, something that's worked really well for you, for you um, and building that into that community. So when you're thinking about your community, what is it all about? Does it have a theme? Um, and then I think of the who, why, what, where, when, I would struggle with that. Um, thinking about the who, who's going to be in your community? More importantly, who isn't? You know, is this a safe space for people to come together? Who do you not want in there? Do you, you know, SLT, management, salespeople, I don't know. Who, whoever you don't want um, in there is, is equally important so that um, you can manage that community uh, safely. So, and then thinking about why, uh, people might want to join your community. How do you ensure that the content is engaging um, and kept up to date and, and something that people want to say? And then thinking about what the purpose of the community is, what do you actually want to achieve? What do your members want to achieve by joining that? We're all really busy. What makes them come to your community over others? Because there are lots that you could be members of. Um, and what do the activities look like? And then when we think of the where, it's where we're we going to communicate. Uh, where are people going to ask for help? Where are people going to show content? And and when? When do they want to communicate? You can sometimes over announce things. You know, lots and lots of notifications can be just too many. It drives people away. So what is your rhythm of business there? Do you want to have a regular event that you create in? So thinking about that. So all key things that you want to consider for your community. Um, but who's going to help you? I'm pretty sure not everybody, you know, you've not got the answers to everybody's questions. So maybe you need that V team around you. Um, and if you do, what are their roles going to be? Who um, or what are they going to what are they going to own in that community? And just what are they committing to? So if I think of the superheroes community, I've committed to delivering teams in 20 sessions and showing that content. I'll join webinars, I might answer some questions, but that's my commitment. And other people in the V team all have their commitment. It might be that I post something every Monday or I do a roundup of, of activity and we send that out on a Friday or I manage webinars, could be, could be all sorts. Now, what I'm gonna do now is just give you a, an example, a real example of um, communities that I'm actually a member of. So. Um, in Microsoft, we have many, many communities um, and we have them for various reasons. So and these are in teams. Um, but this military at Microsoft, um, I'm ex-British Army. I, I organize our remembrance um, events. So in this community, I'm busy asking people what they want. We're preparing. There's lots of project planning going on. And this is why teams um, is a great place for me to, to, to work through that. We do have that social side of our community as well, which is the engaged side, and we bring the two together. So Teams is really about that knowledge sharing, that working, collaborating with your community, and the engaged piece is really about that social interaction, that, you know, chatting between each other, what, we, what we're up to, sharing war stories as we do, in that military community. 
I'm also in uh, Women in Global Customer Success. So this is colleagues all over the world that work in customer success. We talk about anything in, in there from what books you've read to how to inspire you to kind of, I don't know, go for that next role. Um, then we've got things like the UK Sports and Social Club. Now, there are tons and tons of different clubs. Um, now, you might want to only kind of show the ones you're interested in, given there's, I don't know, like 40 different channels. But you'll see in here, there's a channel for each one of these clubs. And this one for motorcycling, I don't have a motorbike, just to caveat that. But they, uh, yeah, they're talking about different um, places they go and different bikes they've got. Um, in our Accessibility Champions community, this is people around the organisation that want to support uh, accessibility um, as the sessions that we deliver. So we might do things like show demo content or what landed really well or, you know, new features that have come out. And then we've got external communities. So um, I might have, you, you may even be a member of that, one of these, um, the Community Corner, um, in here, you'll have some great things like everybody who joins this community gets a welcome message. And that welcome message might have things like how to nav navigate around the community, what the community is all about. Um, and this is done with Power Automate. So somebody fills in a form, they automatically get this welcome message. It tells them everything they need to know. Um, there's even a little video here as well about joining this community. Uh, they've also, you see here, um, put, numbered the channels and, and each of those channels is, is, has got a real purpose. If I go down into an old community that I previously created for retail customers, um, one thing that I really love here, and you'll see I've done a similar thing, each one of those channels has got a purpose. In my case, it also had an owner. So if you had... Um, a question about Viva, there was somebody who owned that Viva channel and somebody that uh, would would respond back to you there. Um, but I just want to take you up to manage team here. So I've clicked on team and the three dots there. You'll see that my team all had tags um, and that's the different roles. So in the community, if somebody asked a question about a certain bit of technology or a certain question that I know a particular role would be able to answer, I would at mention that tag. So if people in your community have got different skills, for instance, and you want somebody who knows about SharePoint, you know, part of your joining um, process could be what, what skills have you got? You could give them multiple tags where, uh, you know, if somebody has a SharePoint question in the, in the community, you can say at SharePoint and anybody with that skill is going to get a ping. Um, you might also want to do things like in my uh, channel here, I've got news and roadmap. I've actually got an RSS connector in there. It took two minutes to set up. That's bringing in information from the, the roadmap. We've also tabbed, um, tagged the roadmap up the top there as well. Uh, so you can click in and find out you know, all the latest features that are come in. Um, in my general channel as well, I mentioned about that social aspect. Yeah, we do want, we, I would not say Teams is that place where you're going to have those back and forward conversations about, you know, your dog <laughs> or, or, you know, what you did at the weekend. So superheroes are your, in this case, are in whatever engage page you might have your, for your community. Now, Another thing that I've got here is my Teams in 20 channel and in here I've brought in my YouTube so that people can go and have a look at previous sessions. And then finally, at the bottom here, um, I've got a private channel and that private channel is for my um, V team to come together and maybe discuss what's going on in the community, what needs to, to be added, to check, be changed. Um, you might even want to think about a shared channel, especially if it's, it's internally. Uh, so I think that's everything I wanted to show you from just a view of that community. If I go back to my slides here, and obviously I'll be sharing these with you. Um, just a reminder of some of those points that I just made. So when you create your community, maybe give everybody a lovely warm welcome and help them understand what the community is all about. Thinking about pinning maybe a message to that welcome channel or even
pin in a message to each one of the channels to describe, you know, what people can expect to get out of that. Um, and then thinking about that automation, do you want to use something like Power Automate to, to welcome people um, automatically and even create a nice little video? Um, think about, you know, do you want to do things like host monthly calls? Um, the beauty of it of being in Teams is all that information will stay in Teams. Um, you know, those calls could be about sharing experiences or best practice. You might want to discuss challenges or opportunities that you're facing. And and then resources. Actually, that's one thing that I didn't uh, show that was I just go back to Teams. If you um, have files and this is another great reason to be using Teams, if you've got files that you uh, what show often with your community and people are always asking for don't forget that you can actually pin some of your content to the top of that file section just to remind people um you know just to make it easy for people to actually find that content um and then thinking about those app mentions and and tagging as well i really do love uh tagging i think it's a it's an unused feature that people are not even aware that actually exists. One thing I would say is just be really careful with the amount of app mentions and, and um, announcements that, that happen um, because you can overdo it with notifications and that kind of pushes people away. Um, if you want to be a little bit more advanced, you might want to think about considering a bot for your community. Now, we used to do this way before Copilot. Uh, so, you know, uh, actually what the bot did, we linked it up to a SharePoint um, page and you could ask questions of the content that was in the SharePoint page. So that is still something you could do today. But uh, most people, you know, if you've got Copilot, that's what you're going to be using now. And, and then think about uh, proactively sending messages to your community as well. If you've used Company Communicator before, you'll be familiar with this, but you know, Company Communicator um, is a great tool that means that you can quickly send a message that's pushed into a chat or a group chat even, um, or a team, and, and it, you know, you're sharing that content. So if you've got a new event coming up and you wanna share that uh, information with your community, you could share it to everybody that's in that team via Company Communicator. And, and as I said, I'm going to show all these links out so um, you can go and have a look at that. Don't forget to encourage um, it, it engagement. Now, one thing that um, I have noticed is people will tend to directly contact me. So I try to get people to go back into the community and post their question, because if that person's got a question, lots of other people will probably have the same question. So you maybe have to do a little bit of policing on your community, get them to post the question. Um, it's worth the effort. And then thinking about things like how visual is your um, is your posting as well. So yeah, how do you want to do things like grouping content with hashtags but how do you want to include things like gifts and videos as well um i do like more visual con um, content so uh, i think that draws my eye to that post more so think about how you're going to make that more um entertaining for your community members and then thinking about large teams or large communities i should say you know large communities within your organizations play key roles and whether that is employee resource groups um, uh, or you know just things like those spots and social clubs that you saw there you, you might want to think about how you can enhance the efficiency of those groups by having those focus channels um, like I did with the retail team. This really helps streamline those conversations and, and facilitate more targeted discussions. You know, it can be really hard to manage those large communities and you want to stay as organised as, as possible. So think about who can create new channels within your organisation and, you know, what permissions that you've given everybody. Um, also, you might want to, as you know, so that sports, sports and social uh, team with tons and tons of channels, um, thinking about helping your community members, you know, manage that. So do, what do they want to show? What do they want to hide? And if they've got ones that they use a lot, what do they actually want to pin? 
Um, and then also don't forget to check your security. Uh, who are your owners? Who are your members? Are those people still valid in your community? Um, and it's, don't forget about those private channels too. So, you know, my security training tells me uh, just about every session, hackers don't hack in, they log in. So uh, think about who's logging into your community. Um, and as I said before, don't forget about those uh, notifications. V you know, set some real clear guidelines with your v, v team on, on who's going to be able to send notifications out and when that's going to happen. Uh, and in summary or in conclusion, you know, just a reminder, uh, communities are extremely uh, powerful tools for helping uh, build up that, um, you know, I suppose, healthy, healthy community and culture within your organisation. So if you want to help foster that, new, you know, uh, that sense of community and you want to, to um, kind of share your ideas, uh, Teams is a, is a great place to do it. But don't forget, teams for that, uh, I suppose, that content creation and, um, you know, projects, collaboration work, and then Viva Engage is that social. Uh, so that's it. That's all I've got for you today. Hope that has given you some ideas. Next week, we are going to be talking about accessibility in Windows 11. Uh, do hope you can come and join us and uh, have a lovely rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. Uh -oh.